Dragon's Dogma 2, my most awaited RPG in the last few years, released with a massive controversy regarding performance and microtransactions, but that's not what I want to focus on in this video. The most important thing about a video game is whether or not the game is actually fun. So in this video, you're gonna see my first 25 hours in the world of Dragon's Dogma 2, and we'll be experiencing for ourselves whether this game is actually worth it or not. We're going to be fighting dragons, kidnapped by griffins, and we're going to try and take down the false arisen that sits upon the throne of Vermont. So without further ado, this is Dragon's Dogma 2. The game starts off with what seems to be a fever dream of how things were meant to be. We are crowned as the Sovereign, ruler of Vermont. In the midst of the celebration, a mysterious voice spoke to us and awakened us from our dream, and the reality we come to cannot be more different. We have no memory of what happened, we do not know who we are, and we are stuck in a prison with what seemed to be mindless pawns. This is where we were supposed to make our character, but since we've already done that in a previous livestream, we've already got him ready right here. But in summary, character creation in Dragon's Dogma 2 is the best it's ever been, and most likely the best character creator out there in any game. You can literally make anybody you want. Anyway, the overseer truck is out to start work for the day, and we met with a good friend from the first game, Rook, who's also trapped in this prison. After doing honest work, a commotion started happening, and we rushed to the scene only to find out that the excavation site is being attacked by a very large Medusa. And immediately, we are thrown into battle, our first taste of Dragon's Dogma 2 combat. Honestly, I was feeling very rusty. I haven't played Dragon's Dogma in a while, so it took some time to adjust. Of course, I immediately tried out as many things as I could to bring this Medusa down, like stabbing, slashing, throwing a random box which didn't do much, but eventually my brain started to remember how Dragon's Dogma is supposed to be played, so I immediately climbed on its back and had a stabathon with the rest of the pawns. We didn't quite defeat it, but we did do enough damage that the Medusa decided to get her ass out of there, and just when things were quieting down, a mysterious figure told us that we are the Arisen, and we weren't meant to be there. You need only believe in your own destiny, Arisen. The figure freed Rook from the curse that was keeping him in the prison, and we ran for our lives oh, as you? we were chased by the Get guards. Eventually, we had no choice but to jump off a cliff where a griffin awaited us and flew us into the wide continent. I have a couple of theories about who that mysterious figure was. If you played Dragon's Dogma 1, you might know too, but the important thing is that we are free, and we're getting our first look at the world of Dragon's Dogma 2. After getting as far north as we could, eventually this chick was able to shoot down our griffin, causing us to crash in a remote wooded area, and our pawn rook succumbed to his annual fate of being thrown into the brine, but this time not by our hand. The brine may swallow me whole, but I will not perish. Local soldiers did come to our rescue after the commotion done by the falling griffin, and he invited us back to camp. Also, this would be a great time to let you know that I'm changing graphical settings throughout this playthrough, so I apologize if some parts look weird, but aside from that, I'm having an absolute blast. Combat generally feels the same in terms of controls, but everything is a lot more impactful. Heavy attacks now have these finishers when the enemy is staggered, and you feel the momentum of each attack and movement. The only downside to this is that the old game feels a lot snappier, but eventually I did get used to it. We arrived at camp, where members of the Pawn Legion welcomed us as the Arisen, much to the surprise of the soldiers as there was already an Arisen sitting at the throne of Vermund. So there's definitely something suspicious going on, and the fake Arisen has stolen what was supposed to be ours. We needed to confirm our identity though, and we did just that by summoning our main pawn, and so Adelia makes a return in the sequel too. She looks a bit different from the live stream. I touched her up a bit and added some face tattoos, but she's still the most reliable mage in the rift. If you want to bring her in your own adventures, I'd greatly appreciate it, so I'll include her pawn code in the pinned comment below. So here's our objectives. Number one is we need to wait for the Watchman to arrive and let him take us to the capital so we can confirm our identity and take the throne. Easy. Second, we lost our memory, so we need to juggle it up a bit. Melv, a village close to here, was recently attacked by the dragon, so that's our first destination, and now, the game opens up and pretty much allows us to do whatever we want so you know what that means. We need some drip upgrade, because right now, I look like Shrek from the second movie. Unfortunately, we don't have enough funds to actually buy armor, so I did some quests helping a lost recruit who was beset by harpies, and after exploring around the forest fighting goblins and stuff, I accidentally wandered to Melv, which is perfect, this is where we were supposed to go. 
True to the reports, this village is burned to the ground. And soon, this triggered our memory. The dragon looks more menacing than ever, and it seems we were a soldier stationed right here in Melv when the dragon attacked. I didn't really know what to do in this sequence, the dragon looked way too large and I didn't know where to attack so I just kinda slapped his feet. Eventually I tried to go for the heart, but I ran out of stamina a lot faster than I expected, so I used the remaining ones to at least slash on his armpit. That ended the battle sequence and we see the dragon going for the girl who shot our griffin. Apparently we used ourselves as a distraction to save her, got targeted, and ate the full power of a dragon's flame. Barbecued, we lay on the ground as the dragon opened up our chest and took our heart, officially bestowing upon us the title and destiny of the Arisen. From this moment forth. We awoke in the care of Ulrika, the girl we saved on the day of the dragon's attack. The reunion, however, was interrupted by a guard from the Border Watch, and before we leave, I do have to say, this girl is hella cute, that I almost want to forgive her for shooting down our griffin. She's most likely one of the main romances in this game, like Kina was back in the first one. So, Sir Gregor actually ended up being the watchman who will take us to the capital, but before we leave, I do really want to upgrade my drip first. I mean, it would be embarrassing to go to the capital looking like a Skyrim peasant, so I told him to wait for a bit while I do some side quests. This will be quick, I swear. First we got some pants. It was getting a bit windy down there, so that's my first priority. We then helped out an apothecary and also made some Saurians invading nearby explode with some barrels. With the money from the village chief Lenard, we were able to finally get dripped out with some foot soldier armor and we look freaking cool. At this point I was ready to head to the capital but Ian stopped me because he wanted our help to rescue his brother Norbert so we said alright we'll rescue your stupid brother and headed deep into the woods. We also got our first taste of camping which is one of the new features that Dragon's Dogma 2 has compared to the first game. You see, when you're traveling around the world and taking damage, you start to accumulate a lost gauge. Basically, you end up with lower max HP, which can only be healed by resting at an inn and camping. So, we camp for the day, cook some steak, and what the hell is this? They literally just slap a real steak in there. Next morning, we packed up and finally continued the search for Norbert, and lo and behold, there's the dude getting attacked by a pack of wolves. We make short work of it, and finally the brothers are reunited. I, I thought I was done for. We only have to bring them back to the village and the quest will be complete. Unfortunately for these brothers, they're with me, so this quest didn't have a good ending. So, Melv is south of where we are and there's a little patch of unexplored area up north that I just wanted to see for a bit before we head back. But while I was killing a wolf, a large health bar suddenly appeared on the top of my screen. A roar was heard behind the trees and a giant club emerged with a cyclops ready to eat us up. I would like to apologize to Norbert and Ian because they were ready to get home just moments ago. Cyclops in this game are very tough. Not only am I undergeared and underleveled, but my party is filled with level 2 pawns. And true to my origins as a strider in DD1, I climbed on its back to try and stab its weak point, the head and eyes. Unfortunately, my stamina can't quite hold up, so I had to do this multiple times while juggling the revival of my party. As Siegfried, my beast friend, unleashes his fury on the Cyclops' butt crack, Adelia showered him with a torrent of flames. Norbert and Ian should be helping out, but I honestly didn't feel their impact in the battle. Eventually, I was able to use a cliff to hop onto the Cyclops' back and immediately climb on top of its head. As the Cyclops started losing balance, I used my sword to stab its skull while Siegfried slashed the legs causing the beast to finally fall. And with it knocked off of its feet, I stabbed the Cyclops directly in the eye, finally ending the battle with all of us alive and well. This is the Dragon's Dogma I remember, and this is what makes this game great. Performance issues aside, this is the turning point of when I felt like I was returning home. Anyway, Ian and Norbert died while I was exploring a cave nearby and I actually haven't finished their quest even to this day. But I did hear that NPCs can be revived if you find the morgue and use a wakestone. 
Will I do that though? We'll never know. But for now, I say to the brothers, rest in peace. My bad. So now it's time to make our way to the capital. Sir Gregor and his soldiers guided us so the road was actually pretty straightforward. Except for that one time when we ended up looping back to Mel because he fell off a cliff. But even then, the journey didn't take too long. We had the option for an ox cart, but I really enjoyed just exploring, so I passed on the offer and made my way on foot. We fought an ogre on the way, got killed by skeletons come nighttime, and had to camp for a couple of days to replenish health, but overall it was a fun adventure. When we arrived at the capital, Captain Brand gave us a summary of the situation. So basically, Queen Disa was running the palace after the passing of her husband, and she was sure that the throne would pass on to her son once he comes of age. However, the nation of Vermont only recognizes the Arisen as their true ruler, and when there was no Arisen, there was no problem for Disa. Once we did arrive though, suddenly her plans had to be changed, so we got kidnapped, sold to Batal as a slave, and our memory was altered by some fell magic. If you're asking why they didn't just kill us, well, mortal hands cannot kill the Arisen. So, Captain Brandt is basically leading a small resistance from the inside that aims to remove Disa from the throne alongside her false Arisen and bring me back to my rightful place as Sovereign. And in order for us to do that, we had to complete a couple of quests to solidify our claim, and so now we encounter a similar questing structure to the first Dragon's Dogma. We get a list of quests to do, and we can pretty much do them in any order. If you watched my video on the first game, like in the top right corner, you'll already know we're starting off with monster hunting to prove to the common folk that yes, we are the real deal. After upgrading our skills and resting at the inn, we're back on the road because the performance in Vernworth is literally killing my PC. Anyway, there's three things we have to do. Find missing soldiers east of the capital, call goblins at Trevo Mine, and aid the soldiers sent to help out in Harv Village. Easy peasy. We start off our next journey with a griffin sighting, and since this is my first wild griffin sighting in this game, I tried to challenge it by clanking my shield. Didn't work, but it was worth a try. After swapping pawns, murdering a bandit village, and being carried off by harpies, which were thankfully burned to death by my pawn Adelia, thank you by the way, we came across a very unique riftstone. Apparently there's hidden riftstones scattered in the world which contain higher level pawns that can be hired for free. So meet Fortward a big boy tank that will be carrying me for the next couple of hours. Let's say goodbye to May. you look great, but you were also jumping off of cliffs, so bye bye. The griffin was just staring right at us as all this was happening, so I was on my guard, but eventually nighttime arrived and I had to look for camp unless I wanted to be killed by the undead once again. As I was thinking that, I slid off of a cliff right into a saurian nest, so we had this epic battle in the dark, just trying to see what's going on and using my shield to parry and stab the lizards. We were triumphant, and luckily there was a camp just across the beach, so we rested, ate some meat, and prepared for the next day. Morning arrived. We're finally able to see where we are, and we're fairly close to our destination. We're still looking for missing soldiers, but while I was carrying this massive stone looking to throw it at anything, we found them fighting by a minotaur. I positioned myself, aimed at the greatest target for my boulder, a yeet, and I completely missed. Besides that, this minotaur was actually pretty easy. It did try to get me to come off like an actual bull whenever I tried to climb it, but eventually he knocked himself down after charging headfirst into a stone. We took advantage of the opportunity, buried our sword into its head, and dealt big damage. After a while, the flames just kinda engulfed the beast, and that's one monster culling quest down out of three. The next one was in the mines on the opposite side of the capital, so fast forward a couple of days and here we are. Drip upgraded, new helmet, armor, and a sword and we can easily take down a cyclops. The mine was pretty straightforward. There's twists and turns, but since we're just fighting goblins, we easily rescue the missing soldiers. But the most important thing is that this is the part in the playthrough where I got absolutely sidetracked and I'll show you what happened. So Trevor Mine's entrance was west of Vernworth, and when we got done with the mine, we came out on the north side near Mel, the starting village. I decided that hey, this might be a good idea to visit and give some flowers to Ulrika just to try out the romance system if you know what I mean. But then I made the biggest mistake of talking to this random NPC named Miles who asked us for a favor to escort him across the whole freaking map. I dream of traveling the world by your side. Brother, get the fuck out of my party. 
Well, he won't leave, so I had no choice but to just do the quest, and getting to where he wanted to go was a whole ordeal. I'm talking getting blasted by Chimera, which by the way is an absolute monster in this game. It's got new moves, each head can kill you easily, and I'm doing too little damage. We also fought a Cyclops near a broken bridge, and I tried to do that thing in the trailer where you make it fall, but instead it just kinda hung in there ass up. About halfway through, we luckily found Nick, the ox cart driver who was bound for our destination. I paid the 200 gold and off we went to the checkpoint rest town, right on the border of Vermont and Batal. I am now further than I've ever been to both Melv and the main quest. Despite the massive detour, this town was actually pretty cool. I got bombarded by new quests, but the one that I prioritized was this one with the apothecary's grandson, Raj. Raj was a kind boy, a great helper, always had a smile on his face. Unfortunately, Raj got dragged by wolves and is most likely being digested as I relay you this information. Based on what the villagers told us, Raj was last seen tending to a bed of Moonglow near Old Tome somewhere east. After fighting some monsters like we usually do, we arrived at the Cenotaph and there's nothing here. No signs of Raj, no quest marker, so I was honestly kinda lost. Suddenly, out of nowhere, I heard this whooshing sound, getting closer and closer, and as I looked behind me, there it was. A massive griffin with an ox right in its talons. Oh boy, let's freaking go. We unleashed everything we had on this bird. I was climbing on its back, making its wings bleed, and my magic users were blowing flames right on its face. It was very tanky, but we were dealing damage, so I felt that we actually had a good chance of bringing this one down. The flames burned its feathers, causing it to fall down, and I took that opportunity to use Gouging Skewer right on its face. After a couple of repeats, the beast was limping. It started unleashing lightning spells at us, but when it fell to the ground for a second time, I had a feeling that it was probably looking to fly away soon. I grabbed onto its head, it flew up, and I tried to bring it back down. It brought me with it across the mountains. I'm sorry, Raj, I probably won't be able to rescue you. I'm way too far now to make it before you're eaten. And you know what's the best part? I died when I fell, and I used a wake stone to revive, only to have an actual dragon waiting for me who made short work of my whole party. Getting back to Raj's last known location took long enough that it was already dark when we returned. And so after fighting a griffin and a dragon, Dragon's Dogma 2 said, Would you like a third serving of things that could kill you? Lo and behold, we have a lich rising up from the graves of the Cenotaph. I had to run, make camp, and wait for morning just to get rid of that lich. And not only that, it took me about two days of running around, investigating every corner just to find a little boy that's most likely pooped by now, and here's the kicker. The cave that the wolves dragged Raj into was actually right where the griffin dropped me. It's just off the road, there's a path on the map. We raided the cave, killed the wolves, and there he was. Little freaking Raj, still alive by some miracle. At this point, I wanted to kill him myself. Anyway, grandpa and grandson were reunited and I went back to Vernsworth to continue my quest. The next few hours went by in a breeze. Meaning I did it all in one sitting, I got a bit too into this game. We tried out newly unlocked locations like Warrior, which was heavily improved and felt very similar to Monster Hunter's Great Sword Combat, and I also tried out Archer, which is really good in this game because it finally has auto-targeting. We did the last monster culling quest by rescuing soldiers from a Saurian nest in Harv Village, and then we proceeded to do the rest of the main quest from Captain Brandt. What you have to understand at this point in the story is that these main quests are meant to help us establish ourselves and put us into position to fight against the current ruler Disa. In order to do that, there's a couple of things we needed to do. First is to figure out what kind of schemes she's plotting, so to that end, we needed to do a bit of stuff. Captain Brent arranged allies from the inside to allow us to sneak in, but unfortunately there wasn't much to be found except that her son really hated her, and she has a correspondence going on with the nation of Batal. We also found a private club, but unfortunately we didn't have membership so they didn't allow us entry. Maybe next time. The next day, we snuck into the prison to free a magistrate who's supposed to help us regarding having official backing, but he didn't really care unless we could provide him with books. 
The third day we snuck in again but this time to find some dirt on Disa's staunchest supporter, Minister Allard. With the help of Sven, Disa's son, we were able to sneak into Allard's room but there wasn't anything suspicious there. That is until I found this hidden room and we realized that they were targeting the village of Melv and they had the power of something called God's Way on their side. Most likely, this is the fell curse that caused us to lose our memory. I then jumped out of the window just before Minister Allard came back and on our way out, we almost got caught if not for the help of a very mysterious woman. Oi! Who goes there? Let him cook! I said, let him cook! We ran and returned to Captain Brand in all the game's 20 FPS glory and so now, we've got confirmation that Disa is actually plotting something terrible to her own people. The last thing we have to do before we're ready to challenge the fake sovereign is to figure out his identity and according to Brandt, the best way to do that is by direct contact in a masquerade so we're gonna need some fine raiment. It would also be wise to visit the hometown of this supposed arisen so I put that into my priority list as well. After upgrading my gear and doing a side quest that gave us a free house for one week, we're off to the very eastern side of Vermont to find out what we can about this fake arisen directly from his village. If you remember from our monster culling quest, this village is actually pretty close to where we fought the Minotaur. On our way there, we witnessed for the first time the strength of our new party, and when we fought a Cyclops, we were able to get it to fall down into a Saurian nest where it died of an explosion. I also tried to use barrels to kill the remaining Saurians, but I fell down the same way the Cyclops did. I did hit the Saurians though, good throw. After some time of exploring, we encountered our first golem which actually counters our highest damage dealers because it's resistant to magic. Thankfully, I'm a narcher so as long as my aim was good, this shouldn't be a problem. After missing 90% of my shots, I decided to use the terrain to climb on its back and unleashed a dire arrow straight to its forehead where the last metal was and that killed the magical golem. We camped for a bit to recover our health and we finally made it to the village and it's just called Nameless Village. There was something weird about this place. There were people actually living here but nobody knows the name Arthur, the false arisen that was supposed to have grown up here. I did some shopping and I actually found my favorite cloak from Dragon's Dogma 1. Now that we're all dripped out, we spoke to the leader of the village who ended up being the Thief Maester. We learned some legendary thief skills from him which will come in handy once we try out Thief but we didn't really learn anything of significance regarding the Sovereign. I was about to leave but I had a feeling that there was something being hidden from us so I explored around the manor and I found this hole in the ground with an obstacle course, most likely designed for thieves in training. Of course I breezed through it with absolutely no issue at all but at the end there was this door and we finally got what we came for. This whole nameless village was designed to hide some sort of thieves guild operating right here in Vermont. Darag, the false sovereign, was supposed to be the next thief maester, but when he got injured in the chest during the trial, he posed as the Arisen and worked with Disa. Darag was then exiled, and since then the thieves guild has been looking to put him in his place. So not only did we learn of his real identity, we also got the support of the thieves in putting me on the throne. This is more than Captain Brand was hoping for. We ferrystone back home and reported our findings to Captain Brand. Finally, we're ready to attend the masquerade and see what this Derek fellow is all about. I already stole clothes for the ball back when we were in the castle, so after changing into appropriate drip back at my house looking like an absolute good sir, we made our way to the venue. And at first, there seemed to be nothing much going on. Until I went to the back and found this hidden door that leads to the balcony and a hidden pathway that leads to the Rose Chateau Bordelry, the club we weren't allowed entry to earlier. And it is here that we once again met with Wilhelmina, who helped us escape from the guards once again. Well now, you're... What is it? Has something happened? Uh, we have it on good authority that a suspicious individual passed through here. We need to scout the area. Well, scout all the In here. Open up. Open this door right now. Coming in. Goo goo ga ga. Anyway, Wilhelmina showed us something very interesting. 
No, not that. Skip forward a bit. I believe I cautioned you to keep your drunken revelry in check. Lest you forget, these celebrations of your valor are but a pretense for more serious matters. I trust you understand your position, your majesty. Why not remove yours as well? This is not the masquerade hall. And we now find ourselves quite alone. What say we dispense with such pretenses and speak openly with one another? Lord Phasus. So, Darag is a puppet. He follows Disa's orders, so Disa is the main problem after all, and we also have to deal with this guy named Phasus. Now that we've got all these information on our hand thanks to Wilhelmina being an absolute G, we reported back to Captain Brandt who told us that we're ready to stake our claim. And the perfect place to do that is during Darag's coronation. And so, with everything ready to go, we marched into the palace. My body, it refuses to obey me. There is a voice within my mind. It commands me, sways my very will. Sways your will? Could it be that the gods sway? We must quit this place, your majesty. I fear our plans may fall to law. Let us return to the tavern. Well, that was a massive fail. Darek's been crowned, proving he has arisen by controlling pawns. With the info from Disa's son Sven, we concluded that the necklace he was wearing must be what was messing with the pawns, so we had no choice but to travel to the origin of this god's way spell, the beast nation of Batal. We oxcarted to the next town where we were ambushed by an ogre, of course because nothing ever goes smoothly in our journeys, but once again we have found ourselves in the checkpoint rest town. And this is where we're taking a break from our adventures. Dragon's Dogma 2 is everything I wanted in a sequel. The combat is so much better. Each class feels unique unlike in the first game where the rogue classes overlap by a lot. They've also done a lot of work in the map. There's still a lot of walking, but in this game, going from point A to point B is an adventure in and of itself and it's never boring nor repetitive. The questing is much improved, more dynamic, and the fact that some quests are time sensitive gives you that sense of urgency that this role is not stopping to wait for you like in other games. Graphics of course is amazing, walking in the forest of Vermont is very relaxing whenever we're not getting ambushed by goblins of course. Cons. Performance is definitely bad, not gonna sugarcoat it. They did a terrible job optimizing this game. Not everybody has a high-end PC and when I can run Cyberpunk max everything and this game is chilling at 20 to 45 FPS in the city, there's no excuse. Apparently this is caused by a bug on how the game utilizes CPU so hopefully they'll be able to patch it soon. But this is no excuse for a game that people have been waiting for for 12 years. Hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more and also thank you to our patron supporters for making this channel possible. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.